Hello viewer and welcome to the Oracle of Atlantis. I hope you're doing well today. We're going to dive into the Oracle of the Mermaids to take a look at your Lotus message reading at this time. So this message should resonate with you for the most part. If it doesn't, please feel free to check out the playlist tabs for any of the other readings I have uploaded as they're all timeless. So what does the viewer need to know? Current circumstances, situations, blockages. So we have the return of Aphrodite, temple, birth of the goddess. Guidance, goddess energy, treating as sacred. When Aphrodite comes to you from the sea, you are being reminded of your deep, delicious nature, the power of sensual desire, and the holiness of laughter and delight. There will be female friends who encourage you to remain free and to find out for yourself what it is you want and who will praise you and assist you. It is a time of being reborn into your sensual self and all that you are as a woman. Your yoni, your body, your breasts and hips are all now greeted and claimed, reclaimed with love. You see that you do walk in beauty and that many have seen you coming from afar and have desired you. There is no sin in this. Aphrodite loved beauty too and knew how to share with other women, gifting her magic belt to Hera for a time to help her with her faithless husband, Zeus, or sharing Adonis for half the year with youthful irresistible Persephone. She is not the same as others. She does not wish to have and to hold. She wishes to experience, to love, and to be filled again and again with all the beauty this world has to offer. But she never wishes for ownership. All is golden. Everybody is in love for a magical time because the goddess has returned. We have angel number 66. Um, sixes can be connected to the house of Virgo, which is our house of health could be um, important um, for your health at this time. Six plus six, we do have a 12, which is the house of Pisces energy, which is all about sacrifice and rehabilitation. So that can be having like the discipline to let go of things that are not benefiting our path, as well as kind of rejuvenating or rehabilitating our energy to move forward here. As the underlying energy, we do have the energy of air. Breathing deep, entering into life, an exchange of life bringing energies. Just kind of fitting, right? Aphrodite being connected to the, um, to pleasure. But with this air, there's some sort of energy exchange, which can make sense with that kind of Piscean energy as well, right? The sacrifice and rehabilitation what you need to let go of so you can gain something here. I did see the Fool, and we're going to dive into the Mermaid Tarot. The Fool in this deck is basically a mermaid coming out of water back onto solid, stable land, right? So that very much applies to, like, some sort of new beginning after releasing something for you, viewer. She's holding this key for you. Maybe a secret key, though. She's very kind of dem demure about it. So what does the viewer need to know about the return of Aphrodite and the breath of air? Focusing on the breath can have a, a way of calming the body as well as opening and expanding um, the, um, the, rib, the, rib, the, the rib cage. Tensions in the bodies, you can almost kind of imagine as you're breathing, breathing into certain sections of your body and just allowing them to kind of like open and expand to let go instead of contract. We have the Emperor. So the Emperor, this could be connected to house number one, which is all about the house of self. Very much Aries energy here. There's almost kind of this energy of purging 
um, previous lessons or experiences, traumas, whatever the situations may be to embrace this new beginning, which I was kind of getting with that fool's energy coming back onto stable ground. The emperor is all about um, setting solid and stable foundations, right? Preparing those foundations to build upon. Just kind of this energy of self-reflection. So for some watching this reading, there may be a reflection of self through another here. Poseidon sits on his throne, surrounded by the many trinkets of his station. This is a reminder to all who come before him what he commands and what's, what must be paid for for asking his assistance. He holds the trident firmly in his hand as a reminder of his power, as he is master of all the elements, air, fire, earth, and water. He controls the weather and the waves and is always in the process of building parts of this vast empire. He is also more than just a leader, too. As father to all merfolk, it is his responsibility to keep all of his children safe, protected, and secure. It is on his shoulders that their happiness rests. One look at his face lets you know that this is not a responsibility he takes lightly. There are things that only you and you alone can do. These are important things and they need all your focus and concentration. You are building something sustainable in your life. Some of, of the pieces are for you to attend to and some are not. In order to make sure you have a solid foundation on which to grow and expand your own personal empire, you must take the pieces that are your personal responsibility and attend to them. Make sure each step of the way you ground your power and sharpen your empire building skills. Angel number 33. So threes can be connected to um, Gemini's energy, which can be connected to network communication, as well as kind of the light and shadow bodies within or the masculine and feminine principles. Knowing when to step back and receive as well as when to pursue and move forward type of energy, which you're kind of seeing with the divine feminine of Aphrodite and the divine masculine with the emperor. So I kind of want to take a look at the past energy that may have bearing on the question or current circumstance. Energy that may be affecting the viewer at this time from the past. We have the Six of Cups. So this can be connected to um, perhaps early childhood friendships, family, roots, things of that nature, reconciliations, perhaps apologies that were never received or given, something of that nature. We have angel number 33 coming and again. So three plus three again, we have that six energy, that Virgo. This may be playing a toll on your health. So it's like finding yourself and your own sensuality through this um, expression of the past, but there's a need to kind of release it's almost like the release the fear of the same experience happening again. There was kind of this energy with the empire in the current, right? This could be connected to a boss's energy, a father's energy. It could be you yourself, viewer, if you are a man, which if you are, hopefully I didn't lose you already because Aphrodite kind of spoke about being a woman immediately. Um, or this could be involving a man in your current reality or situation. And for those of you that are starting a relationship or already in a relationship, this could be your spouse, right? You may, even, for some, you may even see connections, right, with this air and the exchange of breath. It's almost like you may witness or honor something about somebody else's upbringing or childhood past and see it through a reflection of your own journey, like very similar energy. It's pretty equal here. Might even be like going through same or similar situations along your life journey with um, most likely a significant other. The Six of Cups in the past brings into focus stories of your childhood, stories that perhaps were never truly yours. Maybe they were told to you as a way of molding your engagement and interaction with the world around you. 
right now. However, however, the story doesn't feel the way it once did. Just like the Murr children, you are aching to write a new story, one that is yours and yours alone. Kind of explains this um, emperor right in the center here. A new story, one that is yours and yours alone. Free from the rules that someone else once explained to you. Free of someone else's meaning. Maybe wanting to... It's almost like I'm getting like kind of gain dominion over one's self here, one's life, one's own journey. Definitely with that prop predominantly masculine energy here but there's also a lot of these merfolk well half of them look like boys three of them do for sure these ones kind of have color over their chest so i would assume they're not um where was i going with that This could be your connection to, for specifically men out there, it may be your connection to um, like friends of your childhood, but also um, kind of the rules and expectations you all kind of had, which may be placed upon you by other people, right? Like a lot of times our parents can kind of push a certain agenda on us. So you may have that kind of um, expectation or goal or direction in mind, but it may not actually resonate with you. It may be holding you back a little bit here. Aphrodite very much is kind of an unconven unconventional energy. It is the lover of love itself. So it's not necessarily constricted to um, like a restrained type of love. It just is. Like Aphrodite being the goddess of love, she wasn't necessarily faithful to her husband. I think she had a husband at one point. She had many suitors. She was a lover of pleasure, of life, right? Of beauty, nature, things of that nature. So in the future energy, we have the tower. So the tower represents faulty foundations. In the Bible, it can be translated to the righteous will fall. So it's very much this emperor. If you're building on um, false foundations, false beliefs from your childhood, this could potentially sabotage the structure of the life you're building for yourself. Um, even if that's just your your beliefs or ideals. You may even get to a certain point that you've been trying to obtain or achieve. And once you get there, it may not feel as gratifying as you thought it would. Because it may not even be your own dream. It may have been a dream of somebody else, but that dream seemed really appealing. So you kind of like naturally adapted it. But either way, in the future, the tower does represent some, some sort of change, perhaps even destruction. Clarify the tower's energy in the future, please. For the viewer. So we have the imbalance of temperance. Temperance in the reverse. So temperance is all about finding one's balance. One's um, This could be the balance between the masculine and feminine principles, the give and take type of energy, knowing when to, re when to rest and relax, when to recuperate, and when to proceed forward and expend more energy, right? But there seems to be an imbalance here. And this can be um, the tower connecting to the Bible with the righteous will fall. It's like... Um,
it's kind of the energy of somebody being like super, say super religious, right? But they're so religious that they're blinded to their own religion's principles. It's kind of the energy of do as I say, not as I do. So then that energy gets struck down because it's kind of false here. Um, this is connected to Sagittarius, the temperance card. So I was just getting for some, this, it could be involving a Sagittarius that their life kind of comes crumbling down or something is exposed here. When you are out of step with temperance or have failed to fully engage in your time with her, you may notice that all the timed events of your life are a little off. Nothing seems to line up. People in your life keep missing each other. Places you want to go to seem to always be out of reach and things you want never seem to coincide with your flow of abundance. Everything just feels out of step, out of sync missing some crucial piece of information. Perhaps next time you will pay better attention to temperance and her ways. The tower reminds us that things fall down and break apart, especially things that are built on rocky foundations or near emotional and mental fault lines. Destruction is a fact of life. None of us escape it. Things end, crumble, and disintegrate right in front of our eyes all throughout our lives. For whatever reason, you have forgotten that everything is temporary. Something in your life needs to be rebuilt or replaced. Its current construction no longer serves its purpose and it is being destroyed. This is a good thing and necessary for something new to find its way into your life. We have 69 coming through. So I'm getting Cancer's energy. And with Cancer's energy, Cancer's energy is house number four which is home, family, but it's the inner house of nurturing, which is very much con connected to this temperance card. Um, so you may want to work with almost like the root chakra I'm getting. Healing the root chakra, which is our our survival instincts and belief of success, things of that nature are grounding, right? I think it did say that Aphrodite, Aphrodite grounds her energy constantly to stay in flow, to stay in sync here. So there may be a call in the future when things start to feel out of alignment to ground your energy, to kind of stay true to your own path, whatever that path is for you, viewer. So for the wisdom and guidance, I kind of want to pull a card to either avoid this energy or to like make it an easy transition for you, viewer. What is the divine's advice to the viewer? The six of cups, the emperor, the tower and temperance in reverse. Best possible energy to guide them through this current. have the sanctuary so i do love this because you have the opening message is aphrodite right aphrodite being the divine feminine of love beauty and pleasure you have the divine masculine here so the concept of the divine masculine is work 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 build 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 In the future, you have this tower here. You may overwork yourself if you do not enjoy the simple pleasures of life, but that's where the balance kind of needs to take place, right? Um, it's kind of that energy of work hard, play hard, right? But keeping that in check so that you're enjoying life, but not sabotaging it as well. So we have the energy of sanctuary. This is what the temperance is, right? The temperance is kind of the balance of the masculine and feminine principles. Knowing when to, like the feminine is supposed to be the intuitive, when to relax, nurture yourself and receive guidance. And then the masculine is taking that guidance and putting it into action. So we have sanctuary, privacy, inviolate in personal space, respected boundaries and taboos. So this very much is a card of allowing yourself personal times of sanctuary, whether it's meditation, a bath time, a, 
a time that you can basically not be disturbed and relax, rest, take care of one's own being here. Cramped quarters, shared bathrooms, little privacy. Someone is not respecting you while at your most private moments. Your boundaries must be studied, redrawn, and then patrolled by you. Personal space feels either disrespected or as though it is diminishing. It is time for some space to be off limits to others and only available to you at certain times. This respect will benefit everyone. Reverence for your personal space would flow through to respect for their own needs. Therefore, balance and mutual harmony can be achieved and maintained, creating a flourishing, healthy relationship. So I'm going to pull you the closing message from the Crystal Ball Pocket Oracle. So taking space to yourself, taking time. You can, like, I myself like to take baths. Epsom salts are good for muscle tension. Um... But you can, I don't know, light candles, bring in plants, crystals, whatever you want to try to make it kind of like a little mini vacation for yourself. And you tell everybody, fuck off, I'm washing my balls. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Closing message for the viewer. Is the closing message or guidance of Aphrodite. We have the energy of letting go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go, let go, let go, let go. At first glance, this card might seem to be suggesting that you give up your current pursuit, but that is not the message. Instead, it suggests that you let go of your attachment to the subject of your question and cease clinging, striving, and grasping. The let go card asks you to learn to love with an open hand. Let universal flow come and go as it desires and trust all is for your highest good. Something that is held and squeezed and restricted cannot grow to flourish. Release your troubles and desires to the divine and trust in the spirit to find the perfect solution in the perfect time. So now I'm kind of seeing with this emperor's energy, um, that energy of constriction, right? This very much has the energy of um, like a father, I guess. forcing his um, children or partner to act and be a certain way, maybe control issues. And if that is the case, there is definitely a call here to, um, to let go of the reins a little bit, which can be hard. I think everyone likes to stay in control as much as possible, but then you block... Um, the true pleasures of life here from kind of um, creating this almost like colorful tapestry. So that is the reading I have for you at this time. It's getting, I'm getting very much this energy with the emperor here. Like, to build a um, a foundation, right? Like, typically we pour a concrete foundation, but I'm getting the energy of more, like, um, bamboo type of energy, which is a little, just a little more flexibility is actually going to give a stronger foundation here than solid rock, right? Trying to control or force things to be a certain or particular way. So that is the reading I have for you. I hope it resonates. If it does, please feel free to hit that thumbs up. I will have all the decks I've used here listed in the description box below. 
I will have my Instagram account on there. I'm trying to do um, cards of the day on the Instagram channel more simply because um, I was trying to do them on YouTube, but YouTube keeps, I don't know if anyone has seen any of my shorts. When I watch them on YouTube, the first 10 seconds of the video is all pixelated and yet I can use the same video on Instagram and the video when I created it is perfectly fine, but on YouTube for some reason it is not fine and you can't see what it is until 10 seconds in when it finally like focuses. Um, anyway, so on Instagram, I've been doing cards of the day, so you can kind of use that as like almost like your own Oracle deck if you want to go to the Oracle of Atlantis Instagram page and just scroll and land on a card. Maybe that'll give you the advice that you're seeking, right? I will leave my PayPal information in the description box as well. I'm not sure if I already said that. Don't forget to subscribe. That'd be greatly appreciated. And I will see you next time. Thank you for watching and bye for now.